Welcome, everyone, to Ask the Experts. I'm Tim Messagey, and I am joined today by my memory expert, John Ebley, who is the Vice President of Product Marketing for our Memory Interface Chips at Rambus. Today, we're going to be talking about MRDIM. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining, John. So why don't we kick it off with what is MRDIM and what are the benefits? Uh, so, Tim, MRDIM is a new DDR5 memory module architecture. Uh, that reuses a lion's share of the existing DDR5 infrastructure uh, in use now, uh, but it does introduce a few new important concepts that can provide huge memory bandwidth and capacity benefits. Uh, st starting on the bandwidth front, uh, an MR DIM utilizes standard DDR5 DRAM devices uh, in a configuration that doesn't look uh, too different from an R DIM. Uh, but what it does is that pairs of or ranks of DRAM are simultaneously activated and accessed in parallel. And these data streams are then multiplexed together onto signals running twice the native DRAM speed. Uh, so the number of signals between the module and the CPU, that's all the same, no change in the standard DIMM connector, but uh, the data rate per signal and the bandwidth available to the CPU per DIM slot has effectively doubled. Uh, the parallel access of these DRAMs and the muxing and demuxing of these parallel accesses leads to the effective bandwidth increase, which can now scale beyond uh, the native DRAM speed. So uh, as an example, uh, we could have an MR DIM that uses standard DDR5 6400 devices, and that new module would have an equivalent bandwidth uh, to an R DIM that utilizes DDR5 12,800 megatransfer per second DRAMs. Now moving to the, the capacity front, uh, the change in protocol to address ranks in parallel and the physical changes on the module now allow for more than two ranks of DRAMs to be addressed. Uh, today, as RDIMs and standard RCDs are defined, uh, there's not a cost-effective way to go beyond two ranks of DRAMs. Uh, with these MR DIM changes, um, we can have a taller DIM with four to eight ranks of single die package DRAM, or we could have a standard size uh, DIM with four to eight ranks of dual die packages. And this is a very cost efficient way of increasing the capacity per slot in a DDR5 system. In order to reap these benefits, a CPU must explicitly support MR DIM to take advantage of these features. And we expect most server CPUs will in the future support MR DIM. So, John, you mentioned bandwidth and capacity, and I know in discussions we've had in uh, previous episodes, we talked about how for DDR5 RDIMs, brand new chipset, really, to get the bandwidth and capacity benefits. Are we looking at a new chipset required for DDR5 MR DIM? A uh, good question, Tim, and the answer is mostly yes. Um, beyond the CPU support I uh, just mentioned, uh, there are new and upgraded components on the module necessary to achieve the functionality and benefits that I was just talking about. Um, not everything changes. The DRAM components are unchanged. Uh, the SPD and thermal sensor are the same ones used on RDIM today. So that technology is directly leveraged. Uh, the two key new components are the multiplexing registered clock driver or MRCD, and the Multiplexing Data Buffer, or MDB. Uh, so let me start with the, the MDB, because uh, it interfaces to the two ranks of, of DRAM I mentioned before, and it does the multiplexing and demultiplexing necessary to convert a 16-bit interface running at native DRAM speeds to an 8-bit interface running at twice that speed. Furthermore, it provides load isolation to the CPU, which is a key enabler for MRDIM to increase the number of ranks and overall capacity of the module. 
Uh, these MDBs are located very close to the gold fingers of the DIM for superior signal integrity. And there are 10 such devices on the module to provide the full 80-bit host DDR5 interface. So in order to get full utilization of this bandwidth, the command bandwidth to these parallel ranks must be maintained. The MRCD extends the typical RCD function to receive an interleaved stream of DRAM commands at twice the typical RDIM rate. It then de-interleaves the data stream and then steers it correctly to its rank-specific outputs. Furthermore, it now communicates with the MDBs to configure them properly for read and write burst operations. Uh, and there's one more component I should mention. Uh, you know, given the parallel activations of DRAM ranks and the additional chips on the module uh, that have been added to the chipset for these features, the absolute power envelope of the module is higher than a typical RDIM. Uh, therefore, a new PMIC, the PMIC 5030, has been defined to comfortably handle this amount of power required of such a high bandwidth, high capacity DIM. John, you mentioned the PMIC 5030. Now, earlier this year, your team introduced a family of PMICs, mm -hmm. 5000, 5010, 5020, and the 5020 was kind of this new flagship, the extreme current PMIC. How does the PMIC 5030 compare to the compare to that family you've introduced? Right, right. So as we go to these higher speeds, higher capacities with higher support chip content on the module, um, these first generation of server PMICs are starting to run out of steam with okay. regards to their current output at high efficiency. Um, the PMIC 5030 has been defined to support all DIMMs through the end of life of DDR5. So it'll be used on a MR DIM, like I was talking about, that runs at you know, 12,800 megatransfers per second. Um, and it will also be used to support our DIMs running at 8,000 megatransfers per second and higher. Um, so we'll we'll kind of take these different variants of the Gen 1 PMIC server and have a, a single uh, Gen 2 PMIC server uh, PMIC. Um, now, if we look at it from a component perspective, how does the 5030 compare to say a 5020? Um, I'll, I'll kind of talk about three key changes. Uh, one is the addition of two output switching regulators to bring the total to six. Uh, so we're going to four to six. Uh, okay. Each of those six outputs can sustain a DC current of anywhere from five up to seven and a half amps. Uh, so it can source and provide a lot of current uh, from the nominal 12 volt input. Okay. Um, you know, so we have an increased number of regulators. Also how we configure those regulators are more flexible in the 5030. Um, so they can be configured into sig single, uh, dual, and three-phase regulators. Um, the three-phase regulation is new in 5030, mm -hmm. and this flexibility allows for maximum efficiency for each particular DIM type. And speaking of that, um, PMIC 5030 being used on both our DIMs and MR DIMs, when, uh, when an end user buys their servers, do they have to decide at that time, hey, I'm going to use just MR DIMMs or I'm going to use just RDIM 8000 on this particular configuration? You know, one of the nice things about this technology is that it can be a drop-in replacement. Uh, a single motherboard designed will support, support both MR DIM and RDIM as the DIM connector is the same and the routing topology, the, the physical layer, the protocol layer uh, is the same from the host to the DIM. So a user does not need to decide when designing their servers or even when initially deploying the server as they can always come back and upgrade at a later time. Uh, this provides a lot of flexibility through the life cycle of the server. Great, so John, um, when can we expect to see servers uh, in the market, they use MRDIM 12800. And is there a roadmap uh, beyond that point? 
We expect servers that would utilize MRDIM 12800 uh, to be launching and in volume in 2026. Um, and, um, you know, we do envision that similar to our DIMMs, which have had many DDR5 speed bins uh, based on the native speed of the DRAM devices, uh, that MRDIM and the chipset that enables it, it will also be multi-generational. Um, these future roadmap modules beyond 12800 uh, will leverage faster underlying DRAMs and signaling innovations in the host and our logic chipset to reach these even higher speeds and capacity. John, as a final question, why should customers uh, choose Rambus memory interface chips? Thank you for that question. Uh, Rambus has been a trusted US-based partner and innovator in the memory and signal integrity space now for over 30 years. Uh, and over the last 10 of those years, uh, we've really established ourselves as a robust supplier of high quality semiconductor products that meet the market windows for our customers uh, with the performance and margin that exceed the specifications. Rambus is a complete supplier of components for memory modules today. Uh, we have the necessary memory subsystem experience to develop fully interoperable products. And we have the tools and the core competency uh, to quickly help our customers with bring up, enable, and qualification of their products in their end use case environments. Wonderful. John, thank you so much for your time today. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you here again real soon on Ask the Experts. It's always a pleasure spending time with you, Tim. Thank you. And thank you for everyone. Goodbye. Thank you, John.